Oh, this? Oh no, I just had a very rough night. I am doing a themed reading vlog and I wanted to dress up for it. Can you guess who I am? Like, hopefully you can see a difference in my face, at least. Hopefully you don't think that this is like what I normally look like. This reading vlog will be me reading the entire Warm Bodies series. I'm making Warm Bodies have a comeback. That is my purpose of this video. Warm Bodies is gonna have a comeback, you will thank me. In this vlog, I plan on reading the entire Warm Bodies series. Yes, that is what's going down, that is what is happening. So, the thing is, back in 2013, I saw a little movie called Warm Bodies. This was a movie I had seen trailers for, I got really hyped about it, I was in my Twilight era as well. The premise of this story is sort of Twilight-esque. I was super hyped about the movie, I saw the movie, I loved the movie, and I then decided to read the book, because I learned that the movie was based on a book, so I picked up the book and read it. This book was actually first published in 2010. Let's just go through what the book is a bit about, actually, because the thing with Warm Bodies is that it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but with zombies. So we have R, aka Romeo, and Julie. Julie is human, R is a zombie. I'm gonna read the back of the book for you. It says, R is a zombie. He has no name, no memories, and no pulse. But he has dreams. He's a little different from his fellow dead. The thing is that these zombies are not supposed to be able to dream, but he dreams. Amongst the ruins of an abandoned city, R meets a girl. Her name is Julie, and she is the opposite of everything he knows. Warm and bright and very much alive, she is a blast of color in a dreary gray landscape. For reasons he can't understand, R chooses to save Julie instead of eating her, and a tense yet strangely tender relationship begins. What's interesting is that in the movie, R is more like your angsty teenager sort of character, while what I remember from the book is R is more... He, he feels older, he feels more like a philosophical bachelor. So it is an adult series. Um, I think R in this book is somewhere in his mid-twenties perhaps, while in the movie he might be in his early twenties something. So this is an adult series. Uh, I don't really remember how scary or gory it is. I'm guessing it's not that scary or gory because I was fairly young when I read it and I didn't mind any of that. Not that I typically do, but I feel like I would remember if I felt like this book was very gory. I'm very interested in reading this again. I'm very excited about it because I've been wanting to do that. And the thing with this series is I learned that there existed a prequel to the story and I had intended to read it, but then I never got to it. And I guess I then forgot that this book was a series. And then a few years later, I relearned, I re-remembered that, oh wait, Warm Bodies is actually a series. And I learned that there were a sequel. But then once again, I sort of forgot about it. And now for like a third or fourth time, I once again learned that, oh wait, it is a series. And there are now four books in the series. The books that are in this series, to start with, is Warm Bodies, the first book. It was then followed by... The New Hunger, which is the prequel to the story, prequel to Warm Bodies. And I think it's about how this zombie apocalypse actually came to happen. So we're following the characters of the main book, but when they were younger. And this is a fairly short prequel, it's about 150 pages actually. The next release in the series was the sequel to Warm Bodies, which is called The Burning World. And I think it picks up right where Warm Bodies stops. And then the third book is called The Living. I have it here on my Kobo because it's basically impossible to get a hold of. It's not on Amazon, it's not on any other bookshop, my library doesn't have it, like, so I bought it on my Kobo, which is perfect actually. So I have the third book as well. So in this vlog I'm gonna read the entire series and I'm so 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 insanely excited about it. Regarding spoilers, I think I will talk a lot about the first book, but I will also be assuming that many of you perhaps have seen the movie at least. I will try and not spoil too much from the other books in the series, in case you, similarly to me, we're not aware that this is a series and you actually want to continue with the books. And just to shout about the movie, I loved the movie when I watched it back in the day. It's starring Nicholas Holt and Teresa Palmer and it was so good. Like, it looked really sweet. 
I kind of got a small crush at Nicholas Holt back then as well. And also just this soundtrack of the movie is incredible. I highly recommend just listening to the soundtrack. It's a great soundtrack and the movie is very entertaining and nice as well. So I actually do plan on re-watching the Warm Buddies movie during this vlog as well. I think that's it for this intro to this Warm Bodies reading vlog. Oh my god, it's actually happening now. I'm very, very excited about it. I hope they will be as funny as I remember them being. That's the introduction to this video. I hope you will stick around. I'm about to sleep but I just wanted to recap my book real quickly. I'm on page 93. I've been tabbing it and I'm really really enjoying it actually. It's very fast paced which I love. It's character driven which I love and honestly R is just one of the most adorable characters of all time and there's just like so much heart and so much warmth in this book and in the story and with these characters and i actually adore it and i don't know i guess i didn't expect to enjoy it as much as i am i had pretty high expectations because i loved it so much back when i first read it and the fact that it's actually living up to those is great i think this is a great book i understand if it's not everyone's cup of tea but you cannot deny that these characters are so adorable their growing, developing relationship is so adorable. And yeah, if we just consider that, it's great. So I'm into it, I really am. And I'm also so excited to get to the movie once I finish reading this one, because I do plan on watching the movie. I've also been listening to the soundtrack because it's a freaking great soundtrack. So yeah, I'm obsessed actually. All I want to do is read this book. Hi, by the way, I forgot to talk about it, but I did finish reading Warm Bodies yesterday. It took me longer than expected, not because I didn't enjoy the book, but only because life. So I really didn't have that much time to read this last week. But it's a new week, new opportunities, although I'm booked AF this week as well. Darn it. I really enjoyed it. It definitely lived up to my memories of it and to my own hype, my own expectations. I think the first half, part one, is great. R is so hilarious and endearing and charming in that one. He's such an intriguing character. And then the developing relationship between him and Julie is so adorable. There's so much warmth and heart in it. And like, there are many funny moments. And there's also some deep moments. And there are, of course, also a lot of comments on our society. Because we don't really know how this zombie apocalypse came to happen. But there are constant nudges, hints that it has something to do with how we treated our world or that our world was going to shits either way because of how we do with the climate and like politics, war, so many things. Uh, and I'm very curious for that to be further explored in the other books in the series, especially the prequel. Uh, and I'm very excited to learn more about R because I think R is an amazing character. The second half for me is a tad bit messier. I don't know if it's because the book is short or something, but it felt not necessarily rushed, perhaps not developed enough. There was a lot of years like they went to the stadium. No, they went back. Oh, they went back to the stadium and now they're outside of the stadium again. But then they went back. Like perhaps a loss of direction about where they were going or something. 
or how to wrap up the story. I did enjoy it. I gave it four stars. For me, this is a very strong four star. I do think it's a great book and that more sh should pick it up. It's not that gory. It's really not scary. I don't really know how to classify this one other than it being a dystopian because like it's not horror. I guess it's fantasy. It could be contemporary. Like it's all over the place. It's very late, but I'm still gonna try and start the new Hunger, the prequel. I haven't read anything of it yet, but it's a very short one, about 150 pages or 60, I think. Uh, so I'll try and read like a chapter or something uh, and we'll see how it goes. Hi, uh, let's do a nice backdrop. This looked great. <laughs> I need to do this more. I wanted to give you a quick update about new Hunger. I'm not that far in. I read a bit today, this morning, while I was commuting to work, but I'm only like 26 pages in. But I plan on reading a bit now before heading to bed. I wanted to share a bit how I'm annotating it. I don't know if you can see, but I'm like tabbing it. This time I'm going for some colors. Usually I try to match like the cover of the book, but I'm running out of pink post-its. I decided to use green for whenever I feel like there is a comment on society. Here's a quote already on the first page that is, nature is hungry. It is ready to take back what the man stole from it by living. I think I said it that I do think that, especially the prequel, most likely the sequels as well, will have a bunch of commentary on like society, the environment, how the world was already going to shits. And this is like just a byproduct of that. Like the zombie virus is just, it's not, the main issue, I guess. And then I'm using orange for nice quotes and stuff. There's a quote uh, from Nora's point of view that is wondering how mankind survived as long as it did with hands this soft. And she's talking about her brother. And I thought this was quite cute. So that's my approach for this one. I also tabbed warm bodies a bit. In this one, I used purple because purple was the closest I had to red. And purple was for moments that I found funny or that made me smile. So like whenever R is being funny. I also use blue, I think, for like more heartfelt moments. And then I have one pink that was for a romantic moment. I, I didn't really tab it a lot. And I mostly tabbed like the first half of it because I think I prefer the first half. But I like that I am tabbing them. So I'm very excited to continue with this one and see what it will deliver. Hi, it's taking me too freaking long to read this book. I'm on page 93 now, so I'm gonna have a goal to finish this book tonight. Uh, I have about 70 pages to read. I will do my ritual, I will put on some cozy lights, I will lit a couple of candles, I will have some lo-fi music on my TV. Like, I'm gonna set myself up for success, as I always say, uh, and finish this book. I was planning on actually catching up on some work tonight, which I might still do. So like the sooner I finish this, the sooner I can do other things. Like I need to clean a bit because I'm having guests over tomorrow. I want to do a tad bit of work. Some thoughts about this one. As I expected, it has a lot of commentary on like society and what kind of went down before the entire zombie thing. This zombie thing is more like a byproduct, a, an aftermath, an effect of the world going to shits. It's not the reason why the world went to shits. One thing to remember, which I kind of forgot or didn't really consider, is that this takes place so long, or not so long, but like it takes place before the events of Warm Bodies, meaning our characters, they haven't really met yet. They were a lot younger, so they're not the same. It's not the same characters as in the first one because they're doing so much developing and like they're, they are learning to live in this world and yeah, like, for example, R. First of all, we don't know if he's R. He's just referenced as the tall man. <laughs> but he, he doesn't have his wit or humor yet. He's just a confused zombie. I'm missing that a bit. Nora is pretty badass, actually. I love that we're seeing more of Nora in this prequel than we did in the main book. Uh, Yuli, she's very young. She doesn't know much yet, which is interesting. So she's just your regular teen not really understanding what's going on. Um, so yeah, and I'm not even certain if all of these are happening in the same timeline either, because I feel like there's quite a quite an age difference between Yuli and Nora, but I didn't really gather it being that way in the main book. 
I don't know if there is like an age gap between them or not. I'm not certain if each perspective takes place during the same year or month or whatever. Uh, it could be that each perspective is actually years apart. I'm not certain. The characters are very different, which makes sense. But I sort of miss the characters from Warm Bodies. So reading this is actually making me more excited about reading the sequel, uh, meaning The Burning World, I think it was called. Because I want to get back to seeing R and seeing Yuli and meeting all of the characters and hearing their conversations and stuff. Because each one of them are pretty lonely right now. There's not a lot of conversation happening. I did it! I finished the book. It was interesting. It was fun to see where these characters started. It was a tad bit slow. For being such a short book, it took me longer to read than I expected. Like, it, it is a quick read because it's short, but it wasn't really exciting or funny or anything like that. Not None of the charms of the first book were in this one, I would say. Uh, but I'm very glad I got to see where everything started. There were some fun Easter eggs in the end when everyone's paths kind of ended up at the same place so that's always fun but yeah i think i'm gonna give this a three i i really enjoy like the commentary on the like society and stuff those are my green tabs and there were some heartfelt moments definitely i definitely prefer the first book it is a good solid book good solid prequel could have given more could have given more but i am excited to continue with the series They've done some interesting things with the book, actually. Um, hi, I started reading The Burning World. You don't know that. I'll fill you in later. I'm doing my birthday live show. So perfect time, right? I'm one chapter in. I'm already obsessed because R is the most incredible character ever. Um, but they're doing a really interesting thing where the chapters are either like, instead of having like chapter names, so far it either says we or I. And if it's we, the chapter actually starts with the word we and it's from a we perspective. I don't know how to call that. And if it's I, it's a singular person telling a story. That's really interesting. I'm very intrigued by this. And once again, we have some really nice like drawings or images on the chapter pages. Which I think is really nice. They did that in the first book too. I'm excited. I love R. I've already tabbed this one like five times in the first chapter. It's great. Hi. So I just wanted to update you on Burning World. I'm obsessed. I'm loving it. I'm matching it even. I mean, come on. I just finished my sprints a while ago, short while ago. And like, look how much I've been tabbing it when I've been reading it as well. Oh, don't you just love the look of a tabbed book? There's so many amazing quotes and stuff in this one. I'm already like 120 pages into it out of 500, kind of. So I'm very happy with that progress. It's just great. I don't know what to say. It's so heartfelt. There's this one quote. R is struggling with turning human. Like he's he's some sort of in between. He is human, but he kind of has to relearn everything and he feels very self-conscious and awkward about it. And all of that, it just makes for such relatable content, to be honest. And there's one instance when he's talking to Russell and R says, I can't read. I can't speak. My fingers don't work. My kids won't stop eating people. I don't have a job. I can't make love. Most people want to kill me. And Rosa says, no one said life is easy. R asks, does it ever get easier? And Rosa replies, well, in your case, maybe a little. But I wouldn't wait around for it. The day you solve your last problem is the day you die. Come on. And like, there's so... Many similar moments to this. We have R's humor again. And just our philosophical bachelor is back. <laughs> like this one. 
Rosa says I have important work to do. I wish you could be more specific. Like it's just it's just great. Why have I been sleeping on this book? A funny moment is I try to make the appropriate expression of fraternal commiseration, but it comes out less I hear you, brother, and more I'm constipated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's hilarious. I love this character so much. I feel like Isaac Marion's writing has improved so much as well. Like, there are some parts of the writing that is just so beautiful. Here's another part. What I just saw was gruesome and tragic, yes, but also beautiful. I saw a woman pull herself out of her grave and climb up to whatever's next. I saw a woman save her own soul. What did they see? <sighs> Introduction. My name is R. It's not much of a name, but someone I love gave it to me. <laughs> so in a way, getting knocked unconscious by the butt of a gun is rather refreshing. I haven't slept this well in ages. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go and have a shower now. But yeah, I'm so happy I'm back to reading. I'm so happy that I'm continuing with this series. And seriously, this book is great. It's really, really good. I'm so happy about it. I did not expect to fall in love with it so instantly. So it's been a while since I gave you all an update. It's like the end of September. Okay, no, it's not. It's the 23rd of September. Um, still working my way through these books, but I've been reading The Burning World. I brought it with me on my vacation and I actually did read a bunch. I did not finish it or anything close to that, but I think I read about 200 pages. Uh, in total while I was away. I'm on page 375 now and I am really enjoying it. Like I'm tabbing it a bunch, I feel like. Uh, funny moments, heartfelt moments, sad moments, comments on society. I'm really enjoying it and the development of the story and how like there's a lot I do enjoy but there are a few things that are irking me that I'm not the biggest fan of. Like, I'm not the biggest fan of the plot in general. Basically, in this one, they are running away from, like, a military group or something. And they met a character that f it felt pretty off that they would meet that character. And then Julie is acting quite strange. Or, not strange, but I'm not a fan of Julie in this book, unfortunately. I'm still a fan of R. I think R is great. And we're learning so much more about R, both his past and who he is now which is a lot of fun, I think. And he's still like the funniest and sweetest character, like very philosophical. Nora is still great. Em is still great. Uh, it's just Julie. She's she's a bit annoying in this one. The newly introduced character, Abraham. I don't know, but there's so much I am enjoying with this book. And like, there is a really nice flow. I promise you, this book is worth the read. Definitely hoping to finish it this week. Actually, this weekend. I have about, I think, like 100 pages or so left. 120 pages left. So I should be able to finish it. As I said, there's a really nice flow to the story. The thing is, you obviously need to read Warm Bodies in order to understand this. But whether or not you enjoyed Warm Bodies, I would still recommend this one. Because it's very different from Warm Bodies in a lot of ways. Uh, obviously, we have the same characters, it's the same world, but it's very different. Like, all of these books are so different. Warm Bodies is humor, a lot of fun, especially the first half. The second half is quite messy. New Hunger, more... Like, that one is sort of disconnected from Warm Bodies. You don't need to have read Warm Bodies in order to read the New Hunger. Um, it doesn't perhaps give the greatest background to R's character, but you get to know Nora especially a lot more, and also Julie. And just like the world. Um, so like I did enjoy it and it's commentary on the society. But it didn't really give me the same vibes or feelings as Warm Bodies did. This one is definitely closer to what Warm Bodies gave me. But it's so heartfelt as well. And I'm like, I'm so obsessed with it in so many ways. And the plot is completely different from Warm Bodies. So that's why I would say that even if you perhaps didn't enjoy Warm Bodies, it might be worth to check this one out, the sequel, give it a go. I don't know, I just leave, I think I just really vibe with the writing. And it makes me sad that I don't think that other than this series, Isaac Marion really hasn't written anything. I would love to read more things by him, is what I'm starting to <laughs> conclude from this.
Good morning! Long time, no vlogging. I'm still working on The Burning World. I just haven't finished it. I haven't picked up a book this last one or two weeks, honestly. Uh, but I'm currently watching Warm Bodies. I just started it and yeah, it's cozy. Like, I don't think I will be that invested in this watch because I will probably multitask while watching it. I've seen it plenty of times before. But I, I just need to say I love the music in this one. I think the music, the score in this movie is great. And I just love Nicholas Holt as well. So I'm having a good time. She's beauty. She's grace. She's about to freaking finish this book, okay? <laughs> I've read this one for weeks now. Close to a month, I think. And I don't have that much left, finally. I think I have about 50 pages to go. So I'm gonna freaking read this. I'm gonna finish this book tonight, no matter what. That's my aim. And yeah, hopefully I can move on with my life. Once again, it's not that I'm not enjoying the book. I am enjoying the book. I'm just tired of reading it because I'm never done with it. Which is mainly to blame me because it's actually quite fast paced. And when I do read it, it goes by quite quickly. It's just me that haven't been reading. But I'm doing it now, okay? Bye. <laughs> I did it. I finished it. Finally. It's been like a month since I finished the book. Okay, here's the thing. I adored it at first, or like the first half. Perhaps you can tell by my tabs. I really adored it. I adored the story. I enjoyed the characters, especially R. And Nora is great as well. I struggled with Julie throughout this book. She's acting very weird, which is Possibly understandable and possibly explained, but still not a fan of it. Wasn't the biggest fan of the characters introduced either. And to be honest, I'm very much confused by the plot. I think like the overarching plot I understand, but like the ending and everything that went down in the last 100, 150 pages or so, very much confused. But I adore the writing. I think the writing is actually quite beautiful and stunning and definitely plays on your heartstrings. So I think the writing is a 10 out of 10. But like story-wise, yeah, that, that confused me. It won't be a 5 star, but it also won't be a 3 star. It's gonna be a 4 star. I kind of felt that way from the beginning. There's so many parts in it that I really loved. And like, I really enjoyed having this one and going through this one. But I'm mainly happy I finished the book. So let's log this, let's add it to my Goodreads, and then I can finally pick up something else. Finally starting the living, and I'm reading it on my Kobo. So that's exciting. There's an interesting author's note at the start about how the book was published in 2018, but actually he finished writing it in 2015. And that basically he is not commenting on real events real characters but the book has come creepingly close uh, so it will be interesting to see what that's all about so i'm currently reading the living and it's quite boring to be fair it's it's not the same as the burning world unfortunately i don't even know when i started this like over a month ago probably it's just it's not it it's not bad it's just oh not why I enjoy the Warm Body series. The characters aren't really likable. And there are no character developments. This is a weird ass angle. I don't know. I just put my phone in my shoe. I'm about to head out, go to work. I wanted to update about the living. I'm actually gaining some like momentum with it now. I'm actually reading it. I'm reading about maybe 7-10% per day, something like that. I'm slowly getting through it. It has a lot of commentary on like religion and especially religion during a crisis, uh, like how, how and why people turn to religion, how it might affect people, so on. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of hidden messages within that, but a lot with religion. Uh, I'm very conflicted about this book because I still like R. I'm still very curious about R's journey, but I don't feel like the other characters are that likable. Uh, I think most of them were likable in the first book and then potentially the second one or the prequel. Also, you definitely need to read the prequel before you read these books because there's a lot of just back and forth in events. There's also like, I feel like this book is missing a bunch of logic because basically 
this group of people, the characters, they are traveling across the country from New York to Seattle or something like that. And they take different routes. They go about their travels in different way. Somehow everyone still ends up in the same places along the road, which doesn't really feel that realistic. I don't know. I have not traveled across America, but it seems highly unlikely that everyone will show up at the same place at the exact same time. I don't know, is that part of the mystery? So like, there's a bunch of things like that, like, okay, but why did you go... Why did you take different routes then if you, you were all just gonna end up at the same place? Uh, and there's a lot of that, like a lot of coincidences, a lot of, oh, this was convenient for you to tell your story. Not really a fan of that. And also I don't really care. <laughs> So I'm very conflicted because I do enjoy a lot about the book, but there's also a lot that I don't enjoy and that sort of disconnects me from the story. I just did it. I just did it. I just finished reading The Living, which means that I've officially completed the Warm Bodies series. It took me months instead of weeks and i think i need to gather my thoughts a bit the living probably was not my favorite book in this bunch although i think it might be the book that the author is the most proud of i just read the acknowledgements uh, i rarely do but i did this time and it seems like he lost his publisher and like that the living actually wasn't published traditionally in comparison to warm bodies new hunger and uh the burning world so perhaps people weren't pleased or I, I don't know what went down there's a lot of like with the series uh, especially the first and second book especially the first three i personally struggled a lot with the pacing with the settings because i was i felt like i was constantly confused where they were where they were going how quickly they got to places how quickly they traveled across the country went back to the place they used to live like it, I just sort of accepted it, but for me, it didn't make sense. Also, I didn't really care about some of the characters that played quite a big part in the story. I don't think this book was for me. I think Warm Bodies was for me, and I can really appreciate The New Hunger, and I really adored The Burning World. It's my least favorite in the series, I think. I gave it three stars, mainly because... Yeah, because of pacing and setting and just me being confused and not really vibing with the plot. Uh, and being quite disappointed by the characters. At the start at least. It got better by the end. I do really like how they ended the book. Especially Ars arc. I'm gonna let this one sink in. I'm actually reading up a bit about the author. Because his acknowledgements really intrigue me. Basically, there's this entire thing of how Warm Bodies was a huge success. Like, bestseller, million copies sold. But none of the fans came back for the sequels. I'm not aware of those reasons yet. Why it went that way. But basically, he's writing in a blog. He says that 99% of Warm Bodies fans didn't come back for The Burning World, its sequel. And his publisher dropped him. Um, his financial forecasts turned bleak. He had to sold his house. He seems to have had a lot of bad luck. <laughs> just from reading his blog. Basically he needed to self-publish the living. I'm very intrigued to see what happened between Warm Bodies and the Burning World. So I'll get back to you once I've read about that. But yeah, he self-published the living. And this really explains why I didn't even know that the living existed. I was aware of the new hunger. I think I knew about the burning world, but I did not know about the living. Okay, here we have it. Burning World, the second book, was published in February of 2017. And the plan was for the living to be released the same year, the end of that year. Basically, the burning world was released during one of the most chaotic moments in modern American history. A perfect storm of political mayhem meaning post-Trump being elected as a president. And apparently, it's not something I've ever considered, but it might make sense. This, the fact that this mayhem took so much space in like culture and stuff, it sank dozens of books that were supposed to be big. I have no way of fact checking this, but it might make sense. Isaac is writing that despite glowing reviews, the burning world went largely unnoticed by media and fans alike, reaching only 1% of the first book's readership. 
So the publisher dropped the series and just like that, four years after nearly topping the NYT bestseller list and seeing my name on movie screens around the world, I was out on the streets. This is sad. I understand that this is a difficult series or the rest of the books, except for the first one, are difficult series or are difficult books to promote. This is interesting to read about and sad. I feel sorry for him. I don't know him. I don't know anything about him. There might be more things going on, I have no clue, but just reading about this, it's a bit sad. Hello everyone! I know I probably look very exhausted and tired, that's because I am, but I freaking want to film this wrap up and finally, after months, like three months, conclude this video. So in this video I read the entire Warm Bodies series. That includes Warm Bodies, the first book, The New Hunger, the second book, aka the prequel, The Burning World, the third book, or the second book, and then finally The Living, the final book in the series. I started in August, I finished it a couple of days ago, like end of November, and we finally have this wrap up. This was a very interesting journey, it was definitely a roller coaster. There's a lot of things I enjoyed about these books, there are a few things I didn't really enjoy, and it was just intriguing also because when I finished the final book, I did read up a bit on the author. I went to their website and read their blog posts and stuff. And that was quite interesting as well. I think you've seen most of my thoughts in the clips that I filmed throughout. But just to recap, Warm Bodies was a reread for me. I really adored this one. I think it's hilarious. It's very fun. I definitely prefer the first half compared to the second half. But I still think it's a great book. I believe I gave it four stars. It's not a favorite book, it's not the strongest book, but it has a lot of heart and charm and I do really enjoy it. And I'm very happy I reread it and decided to do this. So I do think that this is my favorite book in the series, I think. I think the first one is the strongest for me. The second book that was released is The New Hunger, which is, according to Goodreads, it's a 0 0.5 book, so a prequel, but according to the author, it's the second book in the series. So it depends on how you see it, but this takes place about seven or eight years before the events of Warm Bodies. It's very different from this one. It's not as funny, witty, doesn't have the charm in the same way. It has a lot of commentary on like society and stuff. And I started to appreciate this book more as I continued to read the other books in the series. So perhaps I was a bit bored by it at first and it didn't really live up to my expectations. But as I continued with the third and fourth book, I really started to appreciate this one and if you are going to read the series you kind of can skip out on this book because even though it's a prequel so much of the events in the third and fourth book go back to the events that happen in this one. So I would highly recommend you to read this. This is the shortest book so like it shouldn't really be an issue but if you want to have the full warm bodies experience you can't really skip out on the prequel because this is quite important for future events in the story. So in hindsight, I think I enjoy it more, but when I first read it, I gave it three stars and I think I'm gonna stick to it as well. And next up, I read The Burning World. This is the, I guess, official sequel, but like third book released. I tabbed this quite a bunch in the beginning, actually. I tabbed this one a lot. There's a lot I enjoyed about this book. I really liked coming back to R and Julie and see what played out after the events of Warm Bodies. I really enjoyed R and his struggles as well. I think throughout this entire series, R is definitely my favorite character. There were new characters introduced in this book. Characters I'm not really a fan of, to be honest, or I didn't care that much about, and I never really started to care about them. Yuli I started to like less when I read this book. Nora I started to enjoy more. I gave this one four stars, and it definitely deserves it. This is also where I feel like the story started to lose a bit of logic, which is fine because it's like a sci-fi fantasy horror, but still it started to not make that much sense in many ways. Uh, but I think that's part of the story, that things just get so messy that you can't really keep track of things anymore. It's definitely a contender for my favorite book in the series, but I do think that Warm Bodies will still stand out. Uh, but just not by much, to be honest. I felt like the writing in this one was actually very beautiful. The fourth and final book I read for this vlog was The Living. This is the final book. I think it's my least favorite because I felt like things just got so messy in here. 
things got so like unlogical. It just didn't make sense. It was a lot about characters I didn't care about. I didn't really enjoy some of the developments of the characters. It did bring it back for me a bit in the end with like the ending of the story. But there's sort of just a bunch of like convenient things happening on along the way. It's sort of like, let's compare it to Game of Thrones. In the first season of Game of Thrones, it takes ages to travel across the various parts of the world. In the final season, they do it within one episode. And it was sort of the same thing with this series where I felt like suddenly they were traveling across the country and the continent so quickly. And even though the characters went different ways, with different sort of transportations. They always ended up at the same place very conveniently, although it's a very big country, I think. <laughs> so like, perhaps if this was Europe, that would make sense. But this is the, the States, this is USA. It did bring me back in a bit with the ending. And I definitely do think that the author did what he intended to with this final book. But I ended up giving this one three stars. I was contemplating giving it a 2.5, mainly because it took me quite a while to read. I wasn't really that deeply invested by now. I had started to lose interest. It was a bit boring, even though there were so many things happening, but I just didn't feel connected. If I were to rank it, Warm Bodies, Burning World, New Hunger and The Living. I'm so glad I read this series. I also read up on why I hadn't really heard about the sequels to Warm Bodies, and this is so interesting because Warm Bodies became a New York Times bestseller book. And then its sequel, The New Hunger, was barely promoted. Suddenly the readers and fans of Warm Bodies didn't return. And this was so weird as well because like it even became a movie and I did watch the movie. I loved re-watching it. I think it's great. Highly recommend if you haven't seen it. It's cozy. It's feel good. It's not that deep. It's just very interesting and also sad to read about how this author's life sort of just plummeted uh, and I, he seems to be someone who has had a bunch of bad luck as well when it, in regards to like housing and stuff and also like he did mention that some of the marketing I'm, I'm not saying like that he was the victim of everything he did say so himself in his one of his blog posts that perhaps he made some marketing moves that weren't really the smartest and that might have negatively affected like the marketing and publication of the books or whatever. It must be rough, is all I can think. The first three books were released traditionally via a publisher. The fourth book he released himself. That is why I couldn't get a hold of a physical copy because he only printed a few thousand copies of the book and they are all sold out and are nowhere to get a hold of. It wasn't even released as a paperback, it's only been released as a hardback. Uh, the ebook is available everywhere, but there really aren't any physical copies of that book. So I, he wrote that he hoped that one day someone will want to pick up that book and give it a proper release. Like, don't be fooled by the movie. I feel like the movie has a very different tone compared to these books. The movie was released during a time when like Twilight and The Hunger Games were hyped and I think that sort of affected how they made the movie. Once again, I adore the movie, I think it's great, but they made it very much... They made it quite rom com -y. So if you think that all of the books will be like the movie, that is so not the case. The books are very different from the movie. They are much more complex in how they are written and like their themes. The characters are older, perhaps not older in age, but older in experiences and what they've been through and how they have reacted to things. Like Yuli is very different than the movie, I would say. Uh, Nora is the truest trooper of them all. And Ari is also quite different. And because of this, I would say, I do think these books have the potential of being like re-released or something. I do feel like the themes of the books don't really match the era in which the movie was released, which I think believe is to its benefit, because if they did match the vibe of the movie, I don't think they would be re-released, if you get what I mean. Uh, so I do definitely think there is a crowd for these books, and I do hope that they will be discovered by the right people. And if you didn't know about this being a series, I really do hope that this video might have helped you out. And I would encourage you to read the books if you are intrigued. Somehow I feel like these are good books to have read. There's a lot of interesting themes, politics, religion, military stuff. Like there's a bunch in here to unpack. If you are curious, I do highly 
recommend you and encourage you to pick up these books. I'm very glad I read them. I'm sad it took me so long, but I'm still very glad that I finally got to them. And with that said, I think that's it. Let's finally, finally wrap this one up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed. Please take care and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. You gotta just go for it. Don't think about what comes after or what came before.